We all know how badly carbon fiber interacts with vertical antennas, right? Well, no, we haven't actually tested it out yet. So let's do that today. Let's take the Gigadoo 25, a 25 foot carbon fiber mast. Let's make enough sections here for a quarter wave 40 meter vertical with a 25 foot mast, I know. And let's run some tests. This is all part of a project where maybe we'll be making the Lieutenant Dude or DX Commander knockoff for the Gigadoo 25, provided there's no interactions negatively with the carbon fiber and the vertical antenna wire. And if there is interactions, how far out do we need to get the wire before it will actually be effective? It's been a while since I've had this view, so welcome back. And if it's your first time at the channel, I'm gonna try to explain everything as if you haven't seen any other ham radio dude videos. Cause in the past I have made DX commander knockoffs known as the Lieutenant dude and a few other things. Today, we're gonna take this 25 foot expandable carbon fiber mast. And we're gonna take 25 feet of silicone wire. Now, obviously, and somebody's already thinking it, 25 feet isn't enough for 40 meters. What we're gonna do to correct that is we're gonna take this new Giga Dude top, Hopper, excuse me, it's allergy season. But we're gonna take this new flat topper for the Giga Dude, and we're gonna put it on top. What I was thinking we would do at this point is we would take this antenna from the JPC-12, and I've added a coupler on here, which will basically, or a piece that will make the threaded end of the antenna, which I think is 10 millimeters fit into the 3 eighths coupler. We're gonna put that on top of the Giga Dude topper, if you will. Then we're gonna get a 3 eighths inch bolt, and we're gonna put it through here. Now that's all good and well. We have an antenna that will adjust up to 2.5 meters on the top of the Gigadude, but that doesn't rectify what we're gonna do with the 25 feet of silicone wire. And the theory on this is pretty simple. I'm just basically going to take the end of the silicone wire. I'm going to solder it into a ring connector or some sort of connector. And then we're gonna attach it to the bottom portion of the Gigadoo topper. Then we'll run it down. And today, just for testing purposes, eventually we'll be building like a whole DX Commander Lieutenant Dude kind of thing. But for testing purposes, I'm gonna use a ground spike. And when I say a ground spike, basically this little spike made out of a trucker mount. I have a video on it, go check it out. From there, what we'll do is we'll have our antenna go into the top portion of the, this little elbow connector, 90 degree connector. And then we'll have our radials on the bottom, okay? So it will all come together here in just a moment. I'm gonna build it out. Give or take a few inches. I went ahead and I made or cut 25 feet of silicone wire. Now this is very thin gauge. I think this is 26 gauge. For my radio wires today, in a previous video, I showed how to make these cool power pull rapid disconnect radio wires. And I have five of them here, I think at 10 feet long, but I also have multiple batches. So I'm gonna get that together. So here we got the wire. Let me get the ring connector on real quick. And by the way, I am doing my best to try to detail what it is that I'm doing. And with that, a quarter wave for 40 meters is approximately, it depends on where in the frequency band you are. We're gonna be right at about 33 feet, just under it today. And this wire is very thin. So for me to get it on this ring terminal, which will go on the bottom portion of my topper, it's gonna to be a little bit of a trick. I'll be right back. That wire was way too thin. In this event, I'm gonna go ahead and use this cable telephone wire that I purchased on eBay. At the time I purchased this whole spool, which is DR8B, it was about 30 bucks. I don't know what it is anymore. Actually, I'm not completely accurate or correct on that price or confident in that price. That'll do for now. I think that I have everything I need to go get set up. Probably wanna clean these wires up a little bit, these radials. I'm actually only gonna use two sets of 11 foot radials, I think it is, six. Yeah, we'll call it 11 feet, 10, 11 feet. Two sets of radials, 
one, two, three, four, five wires each, 55 feet, 110 feet of radial wires. And other than that, we gotta go set up in a field somewhere because I can't do it here at the HOA. I'll get in trouble. Now, before I go out there, it is important to test this stuff and have fun with it. And this isn't a complete build. There's no reason for me to go and try to build a Lieutenant Dude 2.0 crash course if this doesn't even work right uh if if there's too much interaction with the carbon fiber mask with that though being said i did watch a video which i want to link below and the gentleman used a spectrum analyzer to test the interaction with the carbon fiber which i thought was really interesting and i do have a spectrum analyzer maybe i'll have to pull it out here in the future one of the things that i want to test out in the field though is to see if the impedance is thrown off if the standing wave is thrown off or the ratio SWR, and maybe we could take a look at the Smith chart. I will be using an MFJ antenna analyzer, a Times Technology antenna analyzer. Uh, I do want to show it to you real quick. This is hilarious. This antenna analyzer works great, and it still works, and I'm surprised because throughout the years, it's taken quite a few falls, and it doesn't really stay together anymore. It's a testament to how good of a quality this Times Technology sold by MFJ antenna analyzer is and it does things like smith charts and shows impedance i really appreciate this meter it has usb in so it can go into a computer and you could actually read your graphs on the outdated times technology software but this was still a great meter and i'm so sad that i it took a fall but happy that it's still alive i've had this for a few years now all right here's the deal yesterday i made this video and i did have this part in here about this 10 meter antenna it didn't turn out as it should have so we're going to talk about this again i will link in the comments or in the description below uh, a video that really helped me kind of get a better understanding of how to show the interaction of carbon fiber and it makes complete sense you see this all the time with things like your standing wave ratio when you're driving under power lines and things like that but for the sake of it i have a 10 meter vertical antenna with some radio wires out here i'm going to put the carbon fiber mast in and out uh, or near and far from the antenna and you'll get to see what interaction there occurs We're going to take a look here at a frequency plot We're going to look at our standing wave ratio right around 31 megahertz and it's 1.33 to 1 standing wave ratio with an impedance of around 51 ohms, I believe yeah 51 ohms and if we go down here to our resistance and our reactance values we should see that our resistance is 49 ohms and our reactance is negative 13.9, we'll call it negative 14 ohms. And just to confirm, boom, okay? So then, for the fun of it, if we go to impedance and we take this carbon fiber mast out and we place it right next to the antenna, what do we see? We see our impedance values increasing to nearly 54 ohms at its closest. So we do have a couple of ohm difference, 50 ohms, 50.5, 51 ohms, and then 50, 54 ohms roughly, three ohm difference, which would actually make sense. Now what happens here are standing wave ratio when that occurs? We're at 1.31 and as we go closer, oh, we're at 1.32, there is some sort of uh, interaction with the carbon fiber and the antenna. Now, if we go to our resistance, which will actually show our reactance, we're gonna see here our X value does also, I guess that would be decrease. And now I don't have, and I forgot to show this, but this is the return loss chart, okay? And I did see this on another video, which I'll link below, but here I have my return loss. And there's a nice dip in there. We're gonna leave it right where it's at, and we're gonna put the carbon fiber right in front of it now. from negative 85 up to negative 79. This shows an obvious, I know I'm probably peaking, this shows an obvious 
interaction with carbon fiber and a vertical antenna or any kind of antenna that's semi-close to carbon fiber. But we're still going to continue the test. This was an afterthought after watching a video, which I'll also link that video below. I got a dead cat on me or whatever they call it, a deceased cat. I don't know. But here's what I did. I have the GigaDude telescoping mess with an ant on it. That's kind of cool. And I have about 25 feet of wire. I can't get it to stay in where exactly I want it to stay in but it still is within at the most six inches of the mast. And then in the very top section, which I'll get you a photo of, I have a telescoping antenna. And then I have radio wires, which I still need to spread out a little bit more. But here's a good view for you. As you can see there, all the way at the top is a telescoping mast that I could adjust up or down for different portions of 40 meters. And then the wire that goes down, you might not be able to see. Let's go ahead and walk up to it here. And this is the furthest distance apart here, as you can see. So with that, I go into the tent spike. And again, this is just a poor job. I'm not trying to do anything permanent. I'm more testing, but I have the antenna that goes in the top portion of the L bracket. And then on the bottom, I have multiple radio wires. I added a couple of long antenna wires that I had laying around here. I'm going to spread them out a little bit more and then we'll take a look at the standing wave ratio. Oh, I'm using RG X cable, 50 feet of it back to the truck. But I'm at a 1.3 to 1 standing wave ratio at 7.221. As you can see, it's relatively flat across the band. It goes up to about 1.36 and then down in the 7.0 range, 1.70. Let's take a look at the impedance real quick here. And I think the impedance is going to be a little bit high. 74 ohms, 72 ohms. It gets down to 67 ohms, so not quite 50 ohms. And then let's check, uh, well, our reactants. Let's see. Negative 5.2. Negative 4, negative 3, negative 2. It's at 0 at 7.242. And our standing wave ratio there is 7 point, no, 1.31 to, to 1. You know, I'm not necessarily unimpressed with that. The impedance at that point is 66 ohms. So our resonant point is 7.224, I think it was, right? Go back there. Go back there. 7.24 is where we're quote-unquote resonant and again I don't wonder if adding radio wires might help that a little bit let's take a look at the Smith chart y'all tell me how to make sense of this there's a little bit of a loop right there here's the crosshair I don't think it looks that horrible but you're gonna have to tell me that one because I'm not the expert at you know Smith charts or whatever Uh, battery died in the camera and what that means is you didn't get to hear the contact 40 meters to Ohio it's about 10 a.m. so I am 9 30 in the morning so I am kind of impressed but I'm gonna continue to try to hunt Hoda here hopefully I'll get some more on the air hopefully I'll get it on video but I really even if there is interaction I'm still making contacts that was my first try today whiskey Niner Foxtrot 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 W9 FFF calling CQ 40 meters CQ 40 meters, it's Whiskey Niner Foxtrot, 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 portable. Kilo Echo 8, Kilo, Kilo Yankee, thank you for the contact. You take care of yourself as well. I really do appreciate you uh, helping me test. This is Whiskey 9, Fox, 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 73 to you, sir. Whiskey Niner, Foxtrot, Foxtrot, Foxtrot. Whiskey 
Well, thank you for the 5.9 into the park. I have you at a 4x4.44 here in the northern Illinois this morning, and I appreciate the contact. You're welcome, man. I tell you what, we're in a good spot there. We're at the top of the mountain, and the noise level here is zero. Uh, I've never seen 40 like that back today. So, stand by. We'll have a second operator for you. Roger that. Thank you so much, John. It's the 9, Fox, Fox, Fox. This is zero off the four Fox Travel Hotel here. And again, a nice signal from... Excellent. Kilo Oscar 4, Foxtrot Hotel, Sierra. Uh, you did come up that time. I have you at a 5x2, a 52. I'm surrounded by power lines, so a lot of the noise is on my end. <laughs> Roger that. 73, and good luck out there. Thank you all. I'm going to link a couple videos below that have helped me understand just a little bit what I should be looking for when I'm testing to see how carbon fiber interacts with antennas. I had a really good time making this video. I say that all the time, but I really do mean it because once I get out there and I'm able to test things and compare things and I think I have it all figured out, I have to watch those videos. I go back to the drawing board because I, I missed something and I'm sure I missed something else still, but I had a really fun time doing this. Not the results I expected, that being I thought the carbon fiber was going to interact so badly that I wouldn't be able to operate at all, but I was still making contacts. My furthest one this morning on 40 meters was to Virginia. Parks on the air. Thanks for watching the channel. I hope you enjoyed this. Until next time, take care. And remember, always hydrate.